tired, bored, stressed? Well, the solutions for these are doodling, doodling, and doodling. So today I'm going to be walking you through how I doodled these butterfly wings as I was getting ready to go to the international airport to take a very, very long flight. Anyway, I needed some doodle time and this is what I created. So let me share with you the materials I use and you can doodle along with me now. So I'm using the Fabriano Artistico hot press paper and this is a 5 by 7 which means it's rather small and you could probably doodle on something larger but you know a doodle is a doodle. So doodle small. I'm also using micron pins and these are waterproof so I can draw on the paper, put on watercolor and then draw some more if I want and the colors won't bleed. I have two paints. One is the Rose Dory and the other is the Hansa Yellow and I will also be using Ecoline ink which was just given to me at an art store as like a bonus for buying so many things. And I'm also using this Zeno pin, which is not waterproof. Oh my goodness, it bleeds terribly, but it's beautiful. It's like a calligraphy pen. It writes thick and thin. I love it. And I'll be using it as final touches. So to begin with, we will draw a small body of, an, of a butterfly, two eyes, and then we're going to put the wings. We don't want to have the wings, the top wings and the bottom wings of the same size because then it would look more like a boxy butterfly. So we're going to have a little bit smaller wing on the top and a larger wing on the bottom. And I put little dots where I'm going to be aiming for the leaf shaped wings to be. And the point of those wings are going to go to those dots that I drew. I drew them very small, I apologize for that. And you can tell they're not perfectly symmetrical, which is totally fine. And then I'm doing fairy wings. So I'm going to have six wings on this butterfly instead of just four. And the upper ring wings will be double. So now from that center point, I'm doing the lower wing. And I'm aiming for that dot and then I'm putting a like a tag at the end to make it long and beautiful and graceful looking. And sorry that's out of the picture but it's the same as the other side. So now we have our wings and you'll still notice that there is a frame of white around all of the edge of the paper because you don't want to take your wings right to the edge. I'm going to adjust just the tips of that to make them more elongated, a little bit more graceful. And you'll notice I'm drawing very lightly so that I can lift the colors. Now once I paint on these, uh, I will be using the graphite as part of my paint, which is fine. It will make the graphite more permanent. And it will add a little bit of line because the colors I'm using are very light. The Hansa yellow and this Ecoline sand yellow, they're very transparent. So the graphite does really help with adding color. So now I've added the eyes to my butterflies, the eyes on the wings. And I'm just touching up some of the extra graphite that I don't want showing through. Now before we start doodling on the wings, let me show you what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to do a, a line with a twist in the direction to the right and then I'm going to follow the same line and I'm going to do the twist this time to the left. And this is kind of the model that I will be using on my butterfly. Sometimes I'll twist both to the right or both to the left, but the idea is to have the little the curly cues going in both directions. Now, whenever 
I am approaching the eye of the butterfly wing, I will be drawing around that, trying to make that eye look like it's isolated. You can't really see that in this particular wing eye, but in the other ones it's much more obvious. So here I'm getting ready to draw the other wing, and it doesn't have to be a mirror image, but I do want the swirls to start out in the same direction. So if I swirled to the right on the right wing, then I'm going to swirl to the left on the left wing, um, as you can see in the picture. And once again, I'm going around the eye of the wing, isolating it and putting in all the details in the other areas and leaving that eye to be filled in with just color later. I am adding a little bit more detail, like maybe a leaf texture or something, but I am not doing a lot of detailing on this round because as I do each of the layers in different colors, that's when I'll add different kinds of detail. And not all of that detail will have graphite under it, which will give it a different look. So now I am drawing in the curlicues on the lower wings. And those curlicues again are doing, you know, curl to the right, curl to the left, and avoiding the eye of the wing. And honestly, I'm just making it up as I go, which is what you're going to be doing too. doing your curly cues, you're just not going to go outside of those shapes. And that is how you'll maintain the shape of the butterfly with all of these fancy little curls and curly cues. So now it's time to start preparing our paints because our image is basically drawn. We've got the doodles in pretty nicely and so the colors that we are preparing right now are of course the Hansa Yellow, the Rose Dory, and this particular one is the Sand Yellow Ink. It's not a watercolor paint, it's a watercolor ink. That means when we put it down it will be permanent. And also Sand Yellow is a little bit dirty or more like an ochre color and I want a very bright wing in areas and so I'm using the Hansa yellow right now to put in that first very bright background. It's very light but it will be much brighter than the sand yellow which I am applying right now. You'll notice I'm not applying the sand yellow in all areas and I'm doing closest to the body. It's going to be more of a neat sand yellow meaning very concentrated but you can see it's still very, very transparent. The lower wings were kind of a mix of the Hansa yellow and the Echoline. Okay, in front of us right now we have my two finest brushes. The one on the left, the black handled one, is a size 00, but it has a very short bristle on it, and the one on the right is silver. It is just a nail brush I got at the dollar store. I love that thing. It's got very long hairs, and it maintains the point beautifully, as you can tell. So I'm getting quite fine lines with this. I'm just using the very, very tip. Kind of in a perpendicular mode as I am putting in my color, and I'm taking my time. Even though it's I put it in fast motion, 
I'm going very slowly to get those nice curves that are systematic. So the lines that I had put down before, I'm just tracing them. And then sometimes I'm going to add lib and I'm going to add a little bit more. Now because this is neat and I'm drawing neat on top of, you know, a, of the ink already that has this graphite under it, it looks much darker. Now let's zoom in and we're going to look at how slowly I'm going and actually this is still sped up a little bit. And I can see that my bristle is separating just a little bit and that's because I am probably needing to clean my brush. Usually it doesn't do that. And so you know, I'm getting a little concerned about my ink. Um, I have used the white Echoline ink before and it's very opaque, it's quite thick. And I noticed that after a bit of time with air, it started to get even thicker, like this, this is my white. So the new colors that I have are the sepia, dark sepia and the sand yellow. They're very thin, they're like watercolors. But I still want to protect them, I don't want them drying out when I was using my white before, it seemed to be getting thicker when I kept the cap off for a length of time. And already I've been, I think, painting for 20 or 30 minutes, and so I just don't want my inks to dry out. So I put them, I put a wash down on my little palette. And I can just lift paints from there. So here you can see I'm starting to add lib. And because I don't have graphite under those areas where I'm doing those extra curlicues, I'm getting a different color, a different texture, and I really like that because it puts a lot more like interest into the wings. Because the Hansi yellow and the sand yellow that I've used so far is quite light, I need to get a little bit more contrast, and so I'm testing out my Micron pins. I'm going to be drawing the Micron over some of those lines. So I have a 0, 2, 0, 5, and this 0, 8 is very dry, so I know I won't be using that one, and that's why I tested it first. And this is a really juicy Xeno pen. I love it. It is not waterproof, so I can use it at the end. And you can see that I can get thick and thin lines beautifully with this. This is my go-to calligraphy pen. I love it. So at the end, I will do a little bit of touch-up with that one. So this is my Micron size 2, and I'm when I do those little curly cues, I will do an extra curl in the center. So I'll do, instead of one loop that I did before with the Micron, I'm going to do two or three loops. And that will add kind of an interest because I have a lot more control and I can get a lot more detail with the Micron. Because the Micron is thinner than the brush inking that I've done so far, when I put the Micron ink on top, it looks like there's a shadow around it. Because of the inking, it's wider than that Micron tip, which is a really cool effect. People don't realize the importance of layering, but this is one of the reasons that we layer. We get all kinds of neat textures that would never appear if you just had one or two layers. that I do a fair amount of ad-libbing. Because there's no graphite or other inking underneath, I'm getting a really unique and different texture. So each layer that I put in, it has a little bit more ad-lib 
design in it than the previous layer. Until now, I've only been working with yellows. And while the Hansa yellow is a very bright color and it's very warm, it's just not warm enough when you have only yellows on your page. And so I'm now adding in some of this Rose Dory. It's a delightful color. It's very light, it's very pastel. I can't get a lot of intensity with it. But by adding it in, it has a kind of a rosette color. And mixed with the Hansa yellow, it takes on a peachy sheen, a peachiness. So once I put down a little bit of that color, now I'm popping the color with more, and I'm getting more contrast by using the Echoline Deep Sepia. And I'm not doing it in all places, but kind of like in random places around the wings and at the tip of the wings especially. And now I can brighten that with even more Rose Dory and Hansa Yellow. And this time I'm mixing them to make that peachy color. And I'm just going to hype the color some more. So now I have some of my dark contrast. It's the deep sepia, it's not black, it's deep sepia. And now I'm putting in this bright, this brighter Hansa Yellow and Rose Dory mix, which is giving it kind of a warm, more romantic feel to our little butterfly. And it is time to create our little butterfly body. So I already have a little bit of color down for the body itself and I'm going to now delineate the lines. On the left side I'm going to put more shadow on the right side, there will be a little bit of a line also, so we know the contours of the body, but the shadows will be on the left. We'll give it some eyes and two antennas. And now our butterfly is really taking shape. I'm gonna add a few extra dark lines within the wings, but it's pretty close to being finished. Our little doodles are getting close to being finished. So I just added a little bit of lightness, a little bit of texture to the back wings. I want them to be separated from the front wings. I did put a little bit of white between. I tried to put a little bit of spatter on this. I'm using my flat brush. It has a lot of spring to it. And I'm holding the brush really close to the canvas and flicking it down. And I did get a bit of splatter, but um, yeah, not a whole lot. It's enough. I'm happy. So this is my last step. I'm adding some of that Echoline White. It's very opaque. Ink. Put in some dots on the body. Dots on the antennas. Lines on some parts of the darker areas cleaning out some of those extra little spots that I didn't particularly like. And we are done. Well guys, I really hope that you enjoyed doodling as much as I did. I created my little doodles, ran to the airport, tried to edit on the plane, but that didn't work out because my battery ran out. But anyway, I'm giving you my little tutorial now, and I hope you enjoy them. By the way, I do have a bunch of easy paintings for beginners. They are fun. They are full tutorials, and I'm linking them right here if you would like to enjoy those as well.